Hi, my name is Sarah Bowers and I am a kindergarten through fifth grade STEM specialist and instructional technology coach for the Wilson School District in West Lawn, Pennsylvania. I'm so excited to share with you the story, We Don't Eat Our Classmates. We Don't Eat Our Classmates is a story about a dinosaur named Penelope who gets a big surprise on her first day of school. All of her classmates are actually children. And I don't know if you know this, but dinosaurs like to eat children. So Penelope has a hard time making friends. It isn't until she gets bitten by the class goldfish that she can actually put herself in her classmates' shoes. As an elementary STEM specialist, I use STEAM stations a lot. And one of the units or one of the thematic units that I'm looking forward to trying this year is actually one on dinosaurs. The kids have the opportunity to you know, engineer something or explore a math concept or explore different sensory bins. A sensory bin is an opportunity for students to kind of dive into different materials, whether that's sand or water or pebbles, where they're getting different feelings and sensations and getting to explore. Um, so a dinosaur themed sensory station might look like you know, kinetic sand or regular sand where they're digging for dinosaur bones. These sensory bins are also a great opportunity for students in a special needs classroom to get a chance to really kind of unwind and relax. And I think face-to-face, -face, it really lends itself to these social emotional learning conversations and activities with students. How do we be a good friend? How do we go about making friends, especially if this is going to be a book that we're going to use in those first couple days of school? Um, or how do we set character goals for ourselves so that we can be a good friend to our peers throughout the school year? And then when looking at it from a virtual environment, I was like, wow, this would be really great for character traits or character development because Penelope like naturally has this character growth throughout the story. And I saw myself using a tool like Jamboard and it's set up kind of like a slides presentation would be, but it's in frames. And I would put either a character from the story on each of the frames or possibly an event, um, different events throughout the story on each of the frames. And then in breakout rooms, have the students use the sticky note tools that are built into Jamboard and then use those to post on the character frames or the event frames to kind of reflect on their interpretations of this character development in the story. I think that the climax of the story where Penelope is bitten by the goldfish and then instantly she's able to like see how her classmates felt. I think that that lends itself really well to like a journal writing activity, whether that would be one where the students are journaling from the perspective of a character in the story, or depending on the age of your students, you could take it even deeper and ask your students to journal all about, um, you know, a time when they had to feel empathetic towards someone or a time where they really wish they would have felt more empathy towards someone and, and really dive deep into that. So I would absolutely love if my students took lessons away on empathy or what it means to be a good friend. But honestly, I was thinking about this and if my kids just pick up this book because it's silly, and it is, it's a silly story, it's a cute story. If they pick it up because they just enjoy reading it, isn't that really what we're trying to do anyway, is promote a love of reading in our students. So, you know, if they take away the empathy lessons or the making good friends lessons, fantastic. But if they pick it up because it's just a great book, that's fine with me too.